Shit happens. Your cleaner didn't get put right back on right. And this little boot here went into the turbo. And broke the turbo. So I'm stuck here. And a piece of metal went through the engine. Rubber went through the engine. And when I start it up, for some reason, it just runs pretty much wide open. So, uh, I have to tow it back home and guess I'm not driving it just yet. If you're a DOT cop watching this, this is taking place on a closed course in Mexico. Well, I ended up pulling the sniper off. Uh, it's not too bad of a job. It took me maybe 15 minutes. And uh, I cleaned it, cleaned all the um, burnt rubber out of the out of the barrels and out of the throttle body. And then uh, I found an issue with the throttle cable. That was probably the reason the throttle was sticking. Um, the reason that I shut the truck off in the first place was that it got stuck at like five grand going on the on-ramp. And so I shut her down and pulled over. And uh, that's when I noticed the air cleaner was not sitting right and the tank stuck inside of the turbo. So it might have been completely unrelated and I might have just got lucky that it didn't go on any longer. But um, I got it all back together and I got my idle set back. And um, I mean, it runs. kill these things. So, I'm gonna see, I was thinking about pulling the engine, but uh, I'm gonna check and see if the um, brake fluid is, that's coming out of the um, bell housing is actually leaking from the uh, Slave cylinder, or if it's coming out of the line. If it's coming out of the line and the engine's staying in, I'll just throw another turbo on it and be on my way. Otherwise, the engine's coming out. But uh, overall, I think today could have been a lot worse, guys. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Well, guys, here I stand with a fully assembled truck runs and drives I just smoked the turbo on it sent some rubber and some metal through the engine so I gotta order another turbo honestly not even mad about that at this point because I just crawled under the truck and because uh, there's a puddle it's ATF coming out of the front seal on the transmission that I just spent oh, I don't know three months swapping in it's leaking into the bell housing it's gonna wreck the clutch so Transmission's coming back out, which means seats gotta come out, floor mats gotta come out, transmission tunnels gotta come out, transfer case gotta come out, cross members gotta come out, transmission's gotta come out. You know the deal. It's about 10:30 on a Sunday night, and I just gotta start working on it. I don't know what else to do. I'm gonna try and get the transmission pulled tonight. I want to be able to take it down. So transmission shop tomorrow because I guess the front steel has got to be replaced from the inside of the transmission, which is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. But um, gonna start dropping that transmission because uh, I don't know what else to do. And then uh, see how much, see how late it gets. I might decide to pull this turbo too. I don't know. We'll see. I gotta get something done though, or I won't be able to sleep tonight. I'll check back with you uh, in a little while. Well, guys, it's amazing what a, a little anger will do. It's been, oh, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes. Got the transmission out. Drive shaft is out. Exhaust is out. Carpet is out. Transmission tunnel is out. 
transfer case out. Honestly, it went a lot faster than I thought it would. I guess I'm getting a little too good at this. And uh, honestly, I did it all by myself. Um, it was a little sketchy getting the transmission down, but especially without a transmission jack, but that plate I made up worked wonders. And uh, tomorrow morning, you can throw this in the back of the pickup and take it down and have that seal put in it. I guess I'll pull this right away, this throwout bearing, or this uh, slave cylinder. It's also a throwout bearing, I guess. There's a little seal behind this on the input shaft. And as you can see, it was spraying fluid everywhere. And uh, I really don't want to wreck this new clutch that was like $700. And not to mention I got to pull the trans if that happens anyway. So I'm just going to do the right thing and, and pull this out and take it down there. And uh, it's, uh, you know, stuff happens. But we'll get her done one way or another. I think uh, it's not too late yet. It's just after midnight. Um, I'm probably going to pull this turbo just because I, uh, I don't know. I'm just in the mood to get something done. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and uh, I'm just gonna keep working. Well, it's about quarter to one. I got the turbo out. You guys can see that. Really did a number on here. It uh, bent this blade back and um, took a big chunk out of that one. Now, there was a piece of this blade laying here um, when I pulled over so I'm not sure if any of the blade actually made it into the engine um, even if it did I'm I'm really not concerned about it um, it's a 300 I can handle it a little bit of metal um, I'm just gonna order another turbo probably the same one or if I can find the same one and um, hopefully I can have this thing up and going before too long. I really thought I was going to be driving it this week, but uh, hey, sometimes uh, things don't go as planned. Well, guys, it's Friday night. My new turbo is in this box. I just got my transmission back from the transmission shop. Spent a lot of money this week. I'm ready to get this truck back on the road. All right, you guys, I got the turbo truck going again. Uh, new turbos in it, transmission is back in it. Um, I drove it maybe 40 miles uh, a couple days ago. And then I uh, got to where I was going and I noticed the entire underside of the truck was covered in motor oil. So um, I parked it for a few days until I had time to work on it. And uh, I discovered it was the uh, fuel pump block on the plate. So um, I pulled it off. It was a chrome one that came with some, maybe the Holly kit or the fuel pump kit. I don't know. Um, anyway, I just made a new one because uh, the old one was warped. I just got my new gasket on there in RTV. I think that sealed the leak up. And um, new turbos in. I had to bend the mounts a little and modify the exhaust to here, but it's in there. New air filter. Hopefully, this one doesn't end up inside the uh, turbo like the last one. The turbo truck is officially back on the road. All right, you guys, so um, one thing that I wasn't sure if I went over in any of these videos or not was uh, I actually decided to go with a smaller turbo. I went to a 7265, I think. Um, everything as far as flange size and exhaust size was the same. The only difference was uh, the compressor outlet is two and a half inches instead of three. I just had to get a simple um, reducer boot for that. And uh, so I ended up going to a smaller turbo so I think the 65 millimeter backside and 72 uh, compressor side. Um, I don't know if it'll make a difference or not. Uh, it seems to make boost a little easier down low. And um, with this overdrive, I can build boost and overdrive. Um, I'm pulling the highway at 
75 at like 2100 RPMs and before I was at 27, 2800. So it's a huge improvement. Uh, I'll have to do a test drive video. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll get to it. I'm super busy at, um, on the farm right now. I'm actually uh, sitting in the field watching the planter right now. Um, but yeah, truck's back on the road against all odds. Just see if it holds together this time. I'm just gonna hopefully drive it all, all summer. Hopefully I don't blow it up. Last thing that's remained untouched is the engine and uh, it's holding in there. If I can make it till next winter, I'll be happy. If I have to rebuild it next winter, well, it is what it is. But I just want to drive it for a summer, that's all. Uh, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been Wasted Paycheck Garage.